Okay, hey guys, I am Juhi. I'm one of the staff writers here at Gay Magazine, and I'm really, really excited because today we have the Sigma Omega Phi fraternity with us, and they have some exciting news to share. So we're gonna go ahead and um, get started with the interview. It's gonna be fun. Everybody's ready to go. Um, so I introduce myself. Like I said, my name is Juhi. I've been writing with Gay now for a year, and um, it's just been an amazing experience so far. Um, and if you guys would take the time, can you each introduce yourselves? Yes. Um, so my name is Amber Moore. I am the founder and national president of Sigma Omega Phi Fraternity Incorporated. My name is Takovi Young Salter, and I'm the national VP of membership for Sigma Omega Phi Fraternity Incorporated. <clears throat> my name is Kimberly Williams, and I'm the national executive secretary for Sigma Omega Phi Incorporated. My name is Kim Thompson, and I'm a part of Still Make My Attorney Incorporated. My name is Jasmine Sertima, and I'm a Neo for Sigma Maker 5 Fraternity Incorporated. Okay, it's nice to meet you all. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and hang out with us at Gay Magazine. So, um, let's just kind of jump right into it. So, I think everybody will already gather, okay, fraternity. Cool. But um, can you walk us a little bit through what um, Sigma Omega Phi fraternity represents? How did you guys come together? Kind of like give us your, your founding story. Um, so we are we're 15 years old. Um, mm -hmm. We are a we're for masculine presenting women. We are diverse. So we're open to any level of that diversity um, when it comes to you don't have to be African-American, um, you know, anything like that. But you do have to have the masculine representation um, in your title or in your label, what have you. Um, we found that for us, there's a place for us. We needed to have be able to have a voice. We need to build our own brotherhood. It needed to be an understanding of who we are as masculine presenting women which is very different from just going and becoming a member of a sorority or a fraternity on a college campus. Now, we are an exception to the rule when it comes to that because we are the only LGBT Greek fraternity or sorority that is collegiate. So we are on a collegiate um, level as well, and we govern ourselves on their principles of, of how uh, different, or, uh, different uh, colleges want us to be, you know, the rules that they have. Um, right now, we are on Texas Southern Campus. Um, we do have a um, Louisiana chapter for us that's collegiate, and we're growing to possibly have some other or, or other colleges come aboard next year. Okay, that is awesome. And I did do a little bit of research, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you guys were established um, uh, at TSU in, was it 2016? Am I right? Was that? That's our collegian. Our collegian division was then. Um, and again, we were established, the organization on a whole was established 15 years ago in 08. Awesome. Okay. Well, so that is a long time to be around, honestly, 15 years. And it's wonderful that you all are growing and establishing or were able to establish yourself on a collegiate level for sure. And um, I think what stood out to me and what you just said is creating a space, especially for mask presenting women. And I think that is chef's kiss. Like, that's an amazing thing. You find that. I don't think that's something that you find. When you think about Greek life, you think of fraternities, that you think of sororities, and it's it's kind of like one image that fits this or fits that. And I think this is a wonderful space that you've created for, um, you know, someone or women that don't necessarily fit in either of those categories. So kudos to you. Thank you so much for creating that space. Definitely. For and sure. we, we especially, there are organizations that are masculine presenting and also cater to the trans uh, male experience. We feel like we don't have the tools to do that. So we're very, very mm -hmm. clear about that we are able to, um, we have the tools and we are those presenting masculine women. So we do have the space and the um, the way to be able to cater to those members that we have and they are masculine presenting. So we made sure that we specialize in that, in that era. There are orgs that do a little bit of both. We just felt like we needed to stay very focused. No, and I, th I think that's definitely appreciated um, because, uh, yeah. I 
I definitely understand wanting to cater to like a larger group or a larger spectrum, but it's also completely okay and fine to cater to, you know, what that looks like for you. And there are people that can relate to that. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be women that w- will identify this as their unique experience. So again, I think it's just great. I love it. I'm, I, when I found out about um, you guys reaching out to us here at Game Magazine, I was like, let's do it. Let's get on it have to do for sure yeah. um so i wanted to ask is there as any significance to the letters for sigma omega Phi? say that one more time i'm sorry sorry is there any significance to the letters of sigma omega Phi? um no we did our research um we made mm-hmm. sure that we did not interfere with anyone um and, and everything that we do when it comes to how we present ourselves when it comes to our hand sign when it comes to our our, sh- our handshake when it comes to um how our call everything colors we were very very adamant about making sure that we did not and do not look like anyone that's already out there um and it, and it works well for us because we would not be able to be collegiate if we were if we had anything that looked like any other organization out there Mm-hmm. So we made mm-hmm. sure that we can, we give a uniqueness and auti- an authentic I aut- can't talk um, authenticity <laughs> I think it is that I'm looking for authenticity yeah um, so that we make sure that we are we are when we say we are a force to be reckoned for reckoned with and we are the the trendsetters we're we're not telling a lie at all. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I again also in my research, like you said, there is. There is no similarities. You guys are definitely your own group, and I'm definitely appreciative. Like I, this is just exciting for me in general, <laughs> because I didn't think I'm not from here originally, um, and so my idea of like a fraternity and my idea of a sorority is completely different. And so to see that you know there was a fraternity created for you know a lifestyle that I can that I am a part of. I think that's great. And um, I don't know, I, th- I definitely think your work, what you guys are doing is definitely pushing the envelope. And I'm, I just hope that it continues to do, do that and do so, right? Um, so with that being said, what is the mission of Sigma Omega Phi? Go ahead. Well, Secretary, what's our mission? <laughs> Go ahead. Oh my God. I'm going to share the mic. I'm going to share No, them. I want you to, to share right the mission because I'm extremely sick. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to probably get it wrong. You don't so. have to have it sad. I mean, we don't need it verbatim. We just want to have an understanding of it. Well, our mission basically is, number one, is to help our community grow, um, to share light, and to add positivity to what's happening in our community, especially when it comes to mas- masculine presenting women. Um, mm-hmm. We're looking to um, kind of not necessarily nurture, but I guess mentor younger stud community because there's getting, you know, we're dealing with things with health issues in our community. Um, a lot of masculine presenting women think because they're masculine, they don't have to take care of themselves um, mm. physically, physically um, mentally. Um, so we, we definitely encourage that. Um, we've done things holding, um, we just recently had a workshop on anxiety, but we're, we're, we just look to really support our community and especially with the younger uh, masculine presenting um, women to let them know that there is a balance also you know when we first come out we're, we're wild and crazy kind of like your sexuality kind of runs away and so we kind of find a way to kind of bring that in and say you know there is a balance for both also just mm-hmm. providing a, especially now with uh, so much um, legislation and, and negativity that's popping up we provide to provide a safe place um, I've been fortunate, I think a lot of us were fortunate, but some were not, where you didn't have a safe place. And so right. that's a goal of ours, but to always stay in, in the forefront of the community and be supportive. Okay, I love that. And um, I appreciate as well uh, the mentoring aspect of that as well, because like you said, I there aren't, I was fortunate a lot of people are not fortunate to have safe spaces where they can go and very, very um, uh, openly live in their truth, speak about their truth. And so the fact that you guys are doing that outreach, doing the mentoring, saying, hey, you know, it's this is a space for, space for you to, to be yourself, to be holistically yourself. And we want to help, you know, guide you through these different, you know, terrains of life. 
that's wonderful. So definitely thank you for that. Thank you for your contribution there. Um, so how, okay, I was, again, doing research, and one of the terms that stood out to me um, on your website is brohood. I pro I'm probably not saying that correctly. Uh, the accent is probably not going to make it sound correct coming from me. But if you had to describe what that means in, like, three words, how would you describe it? Oh, wow. So uh, you actually uh, did it perfectly. It's brohood. So you did it. You did it. Good. Okay. <laughs> so if I could describe it, um, it is a bond that is tied with unconditional love, mm. a, a no judgment zone. Uh, we talk about any and everything here. Uh, we have built friendships, relationships that will never be broken. And that's what our brotherhood symbolizes. Okay, that's awesome. So, okay, well, okay, individually, let's go around the room. Why don't you all tell me what that means to you individually? Uh, okay, for me, brotherhood means support, uh, means love, and it means, um, for the third one, uh, I say comfort. Hmm. <laughs> so love, um, comfort also, that's what I was going to say, and um, <laughs> and commitment. Okay. Oh, it's back to me. It's back to you. I'm laughing at this. <laughs> um, three words. Yeah. 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 Um, three words. Already covered bond. Yeah. Oh, we did that already. Okay. Um, I have to say emotional support. Um, uh, what do you call it? counseling? Um, we, when we have discussions yeah. and you get certain um, yeah. and yeah. Really, a lot of these bros should be paid a lot of money, more money with counseling when it comes to me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and what's the other word? Um, um, acceptance. Ah, uh, nice. Um, so I will grab my three, which are educate, empower, and celebrate. Nice. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. I love those words. And um, definitely the comfort, I think, is so important, too, because mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes as queer people, we don't always have that sense of comfort, right? Because um, we know that our lifestyle is not, it, it doesn't fit the status quo. It's not something that you see across like media every single day. So comfort to me is really, really important there, especially, um, again, for mask presenting women, I feel like, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I just feel like there is not enough spaces for mask presenting women to feel comfortable and to feel authentic and to feel um, accepted. And that was one of the words that we that you used there. And so again, I can't, I can't stop commending you for this, for this space and what you're doing. And I wish more people um, knew about it, but hopefully, you know, getting into the news that you guys have, um, we'll have some more people learning about this space that you all have created. Um, so what excited you most about becoming a partner for the human rights campaign, which is, you know, the exciting portion of this. Um, so gays, I guess I just kind of said it, but um, the Sigma Omega Phi fraternity has been named a partner with the Human Rights Campaign, and that's really, really what we want to what we want to get into. So, what excited you guys about that, or how did how did that even become a thing? Like, what's the process? <laughs> um, so, um, I made a phone call. Um, that's basically what happened. I I, nice. I made a phone call because um, I also work with Atlanta Black Pride, so we do a lot mm -hmm. with okay. HRC. And the thing is that our my the fraternity's um, community initiatives fit every aspect of HRC. 
Um, and so I happened to, I said, hey, I want to get more involved in the Atlanta, you know, HRC. So how do I do that? So I said, okay, I personally wanted some things that I wanted to accomplish by being a part of HRC. Made a phone call and Ryan Roach, who is what we call our fairy godfather. Um, I ate, I had lunch with him and, you know, I said, this is what I want. I, I want my org to be a, a factor in uh, and be on the H, um, HBCU steering committee for HRC, which they have. Um, I said, I'd like for my, my organization, we are 15 years old. These are the things, accolades that we've done. This is what we've improved, you know, the, the visual, the image of masculine presenting. We want to now, we want to be a partner. And so all of those things quickly came into play a little faster than we all expected. Um, and then they said, hey, we need you all to be in D.C. for our convention. And they, because all of us live somewhat in different cities, actually we all live in different cities, um, they pulled us all together to make sure that we could get there. And they, we were honored, we were honored to have that opportunity. They were honored to have us there. So the, the treatment was amazing. Um, yeah. and, it, and it just let us know that one, these faces are needed in that space. Yeah. Yeah. Our voices are needed in that space and they were wanted. And that was mm -hmm. the biggest thing for us is that our voices wanted and no, we don't represent every stud, you know, out there, but we will make sure that, you know, the studs that are out there, we are going to do our best to make sure that we speak for them. Um, and, right. and listen them as well. So we're ready um, for the things that are about to happen. Um, we're looking at every member in our org will be a member of HRC. We're looking for um, every every area that we have a, a bra in that area, there will be participation in HRC, whether we're at Pride or whether we're at the HRC dinner that that particular city has. Or if we're doing our own thing, we are looking to also be uh, make sure that we are a part of what HRC does on certain campuses. Um, we're going to make sure with TSU, Texas Southern, we're going to make sure that whatever they want to do with, you know, with Texas Southern and HRC, we are also a part of that. Um, so we are looking to making sure that the voice of masculines is heard through HRC. They hear us and they help us make sure the rest of the world hears us. Okay, snaps. I feel like that was very well said. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very well said. No, but for sure. And I, it's wonder, it's so nice to hear that, um, like you said, not only were, did you want to show up in that space, but you were wanted in that space on the, yes. on the receiving end. Um, and I, sometimes my mom will always say this, she'll always say the first step is the hardest. And I think you guys are making those first steps, right? To, to, to show the collective, like you said, for the studs out there that yes, you, your voice is, is important. This is the space that it can be heard, it can be recognized, it can be seen. So come on, like, let's let's do it. Let's get things rolling. Definitely. Um, yeah. And so, um, okay, let's see. All right. It, the human rights campaign um, in my research, it says that they aim to end discrimination against LGBTQ um, people um, through inspiration and engagement, right? Um, how does the fraternity, fraternity's own principles align with that hope that HRC has for the, the world? Yeah. So, of our, so one of our principles is to educate. And mm -hmm. that's the main thing is to educate. And what a lot of the LGBT community does not realize, especially for masculine presenting women, is that a lot of these legislations that are being passed affect us um mm -hmm. right now currently we are at an event in tennessee and if you don't know tennessee just passed a law to where it makes it a felony for you to impersonate an opposite gender mm -hmm. masculine presenting women can be referred to as male impersonators and that's not what we are we're just masculine right. I'm just a lot more masculine than the normal cisgender female woman. I don't like yeah. to wear dresses. I don't wear makeup. My wife looks lovely in it. That's just not for me. But walking down the streets of Tennessee, 
my bros and myself, we can make a statement. Hey, we're here. Yeah. My pronouns are she or her. I'm not a male impersonator, but I'm here. And that's the important thing is to educate. Educating mm -hmm. that, hey, I'm not this stereotypical person that you think that I am. I'm trying to be this man and go into these bathrooms and touch these little kids. That's not what we do. We are human beings. We are mothers. We are grandmothers. We're sisters. We're aunts. I mean, that's what we are. We're human beings. And I think a lot of that has to do with us going out in these streets, educating people, and, and having HRC have our backs with that makes our voice a lot more powerful and a lot stronger than without that support. Um, not just from our communities, but from our family members as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I respect that. I actually did not know that um, that Tennessee just passed that. And it's so, that's so crazy. It's 2023. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, um, male impersonation, I know it goes all the way back to like uh, the 40s, 50s. Like, I know it was a huge thing then. And I knew, it, I knew that it was out, outlawed at that time. Um, I had no idea that it just passed in Tennessee. And that's, that's such a scary thing because it, it, I think it, 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 it doesn't do a good job of reaffir reaffirming masculine presenting women or um, feminine presenting men, you know what I'm saying? That they can live the way that they want to live. Because like you said, you are just yourself. You're just a human being. It just happens that you, you dress differently or you present differently and that's your choice. That should be your freedom. That should be your right. It mm -hmm. should never have to come down to, um, you know, a point where you're scared to step out because you could face persecution for that. Do you know what yes. I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so that, that in and of itself, the work with HRC and the fraternity, that's to me an act of bravery because you're in Tennessee right now where it, it, it could significant, it could impact you significantly. Right. Um, so thanks guys. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And just be safe. I just, Okie dokie. I have a question, Corey. Can you edit all of this stuff? Cool. Thank you. Thank you. So we can go. Five seconds. Let me let me drink some water real quick. Oh. Then you can. Oh, okay. Just to let them know, you know, it's yeah. everywhere. All good. Is it my Wi-Fi? I hope not. Is it? Am I still choppy? No. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna start doing it after every meet, like before every meeting and stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure. Am yeah. I talking? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's what you're saying. Right. Thank so you. I can say I contributed. You know. There you go. You got the thing. <laughs> I wanted to. It's really cool. Something in DC that I wanted to share, and I was I was sure. astonished that. In the three months that legislature has been open, there's 400, over 460 anti-LGBTQ um, laws that are up to be voted on uh, nationwide. And so that was really kind of solidified um, our commitment to work with them because, mm. you know, we, we, we just, it's a lot for three months. Like, for, I was just really blown away. And so it's just not Tennessee. It's, it's everywhere. It's, um, I actually did read that, that there was 460, um, legislations that have to be, well, not have to be, but that have been put forth. Um, and that's just great. Like what? <laughs> that's crazy to me because we were human beings at the end of the day. That's really what that, that's all it is. It, it, it comes back to us still wanting to move through this human experience just like anybody else does 
And it's crazy to think that um, at just like at the very base level, there are persons that are just so quick to um, to ostracize other people because they don't look like them or they don't act like them or they don't love the same way. And to me, I'm sorry, I, maybe I'm biased because I, I identify as a queer person too, but like the LGBTQ community is amazing. Like, what do you mean? There's so many, so many different types of people. Sexuality is such a fluid thing. And for those of us, those of you that are brave enough to step forward and live in your truth, um, it's it, it's great here. It's fun. It's wonderful. It's a great place to be at. But it really is scary that um, people are still working so hard to to try and push us back into the closet, so to speak. <sighs> that hurts my heart a lot, actually. Um, okay, let's switch it back switch switch gears again back to the good stuff to the things that are the happy things so okay what um talk to us about some of like your community outreach programs i saw that you know there are a couple of uh outreach programs that you all are involved in or have done in the past um so talk to us like what do you have coming up this year or um any major community outreach programs or activities that you have like in the pipeline or that you just want to share with us? Um, so we, we have been working on a, um, another partnership um, that actually we will be launching um, in June, which is with the Orally Cancer Found, um, Research Foundation. Um, there are, right now, I know there are only two fraternities. One is Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and the other one is, uh, is, is our um, fraternity that are partnering with them to make sure that we can get the word out about this amazing opportunity. Um, Orly, the founder of Orly, she's not saying that she is a cure for cancer, but she has some, some amazing results of treatment that has been able to kind of work over different types of cancer. We're still learning. Right. She's still doing her research, but she's now in a phase where it is time for her to start testing on human beings and finding out how she can, you know, that this is really working. So we are a big supporter of that. So we're going to be doing some stuff in June to really put that out there to let people know um, we are utilizing our social media to be able to put that campaign together. Um, the other thing that we, of course, all the things that we do with HRC. Um, we are finding with us now when it comes to HRC, there's so many different areas so we have members that are very interested in political, the political aspect of HRC. So they will be heading those different areas. There's those of us who are very um, wanting to be a part of the um, HBCU steering committee that they have. And then there's those of us who will be on committees that oversee the different dinners that are making sure we have volunteers at the dinners, um, HRC dinners in those cities. So that's what we do with HRC. Um, we do also a quarterly program which is called duffel for dignity um we partner with we are a partner of a of a couple of other organizations that come together and what it is is it's duffel bags for kids who are going into foster care basically in georgia alone in 2021 40 000 kids went into foster care very, very few of them had luggage to put anything in if even if they just wanted to put a teddy bear they had to put it in like a garbage bag and to see a two-year-old walk out of a home with no shoes on, barely any clothes on, and is dragging this big, you know, big black, you know, uh, garbage bag with just yeah. a bunny rabbit in it, it's heartbreaking. So we said, no, we didn't want that. I mean, we don't want them to have to leave their home, but we understand things happen. So if they have to leave their home, we'd like for them to at least be able to have the dignity, dignity to have a duffel bag. So that's one of the projects that we do. Um, we just did with Orkin. We just did their sh their shoebox for the homeless. Um, we donated over probably about four hundred different pieces, probably more than that, um, because they wanted to. Our goal was to make sure they had fifty shoeboxes done, and we actually did over a over. Yeah, yeah, we made sure they had a lot more product than that. Plus, we also told other orgs to come in. We are big believers mm -hmm. of. More orgs that come about, the louder our voice can be heard. The quicker, a lot more, uh, there's more opportunity for us to possibly get closer to an ending of something that's bad. 
Um, of course, we know hunger is going to be there for, you know, I don't know if we'll ever cure that. But we, we are a part of this, you know, a part of trying to make sure that during holidays, of course, there's somebody, you got a meal. Um, so we do a lot of that. We make sure that we are in the community to help in any way that we can. We also raise funds for the Lupus Foundation as we have members who suffer from lupus. We also raise funds for the MS Association um, as some of our members suffer from multiple sclerosis. We also have a literacy program as well and a GED program. So if you are needing help with reading or if you would like help or tutoring to obtain your GED, we provide those services for you for free. And we will actually tutor you and help you to get those skills. We also have a scholarship program that we have. Um, if you would like to further your education, um, you can apply for a scholarship through our organization and we will provide you with some form of monetary uh, donation to help you with your schooling. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we do a lot. <laughs> we do a lot. <laughs> okay. yeah. And, and, that's, and that, those are things that are national amongst our organization, but please understand each area very much looks at what their area needs and then they will put together mm -hmm. programs that are needed. If there's coats that are needed to be, you know, uh, put together, if there's Easter egg, you know, hunts that we need to be a part of, if there's Halloween candy, we need to be sending, if there's school supply, teachers, if teachers need stuff, we are very much trying to help our yes. teachers because we understand it's a struggle out there. You know, and, and they're not just fighting to teach the children. They got to fight everything. To keep the kids keep alive. The kids. Yeah. <laughs> so we know that there's a lot that goes with that. So we definitely, um, each individual area, they also do um, unique things for their community as well. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. And um, thank you for your contribution to your various communities. Um, and I, I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's also based on like where your chapters are located. Yes? No? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Got you. Um, so tell us where your chapters are located. Oh, wow. Um, so we are So we Florida. have people in Florida, Georgia, Al Alabama, South Carolina, Chicago, Michigan, Louisiana, Texas, Maryland. Oh. Oh no. Corey. Something's happening. Oh. oh no, that was us. That was us. We're sorry. That, that We're was sorry. us. Okay. We don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. Said, oh snap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it said. Oh snap. We were all like, oh. We're like, oh. We're sorry. I was like, oh no. I was like, something's happening. Something. <laughs> okay. okay, we are so sorry. Thank goodness for editing. There you go. You're back. Okay, okay. great. Well, um, where were we? Oh, we were, were on, the the, on the chapter. So yeah. we are chapters, yeah. doing chapters again. We'll do them again. Um, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, Louisiana, Texas, Maryland, Michigan, Illinois, Illinois. 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 I feel like I'm missing California. somebody. In Nobody's in California. Virginia, yeah, Virginia. 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 Oh, yeah. Ohio. Ohio. We have Ohio. We have Ohio. <laughs> Yeah, he's in Ohio. We have Ohio because some of our members have moved because they've got promotions. Um, they're growing oh, okay. in they're growing their family. You know, they're they're having kids. So you know, our our organization they do move. Everybody kind of moves around a little bit. But yes, majority of our those are the majority of where we are. Um, we are very heavy on the East Coast. We'd like okay. to expand that. You okay, know. got you. We're always open to to expand Absolutely. and go to other places. Well, so if someone wanted to get in contact with you all, how would they go about doing that? Um, our website is sigma omega phi 2008.org. Mm -hmm. um, we are, all of us are on um, Facebook. 
um, social media, but if you we do have a page, Sigma Omega Phi. I believe it's it's actually Facebook.com frat boy. And it's with an I, not a Y. Um, or you can just put in Sigma Omega Phi and it'll come up. Um, I'm on social media under Cupid Space Diamond. My rebirth name is Cupid and it's spelled Q P I D. Um everybody here has their um on social media. On this social media. So you have Maximilian. Maximilian. Would, and this is Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire. We have Dignified. And we have the longest name in the group, <laughs> as well as the youngest, <laughs> is Cool Rush Generosity. So those are those are ones that are here. Um, and we all were the ones who participated in the HRC um, event and the building of our partnership. Um, and so... Yeah, anybody can reach out to us. We are about to begin our fall rush, um, so we are being able, we're getting ready for membership. Um, we are also getting ready for our membership on our college campuses as well. Um, so, and we're hoping that this year we will be on the University of Houston's campus. Um, okay. So we're in, in Houston, Texas. So that's a big deal for us. So we're looking to really broaden and and build our organization. We are not in a hurry. For a lot mm -hmm. of people, we are in a hurry to make sure that our voices are being heard. So the work that we do is more important than having uh, 20, 30, 40 people online. It'd be amazing, but we do want to make sure quality. Everybody cannot be a member, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's something. You know. Okay, I got you. All right, so, I mean, all right, let's see. Paint the picture for me, okay? It's, we're in, what, 2023? Um... We are in the year 2028. Okay. What does Sigma Omega Phi look like? Ha. Ah, ooh. Um, That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> we will definitely still be, of course, a partner of HRC, a more prominent face of what they do. Um, our org should be majorly larger. Um, I see more college campuses, not so much that we have to be on them, but that we are present through our, our connection with HRC and the programming. We're able to bring some programming to the LGBT community on those campuses. Um, I see a lot more of interviewing, not so much with just me, but with my brothers being able to do interviews for their areas. Um, I see the areas growing and I see, I do see our voice being stronger to be able to separate us from the legislations that we've now been hearing about so that we are not categorized as male personators and that no one can yeah. put us in yeah. that category. Um, and no, we're not going in the closet. So I don't definitely don't see us in the closet in 2028. Period. Um, yeah. But I do see us, I, yeah, there you go. I do see us more in a political light. We cannot, um, due to how our status is, we cannot support a candidate, but we definitely can support our issues. And that's what we're going to be looking at. And those candidates that don't support our issue, we're going to let the world know that you don't support us, you know, and so we can't, we can't support you. Um, but yeah, I, I see, we, I see us having a very big voice in a lot of decisions that are being made um, when it comes to masculine presenting, um, especially for African Americans. Especially, especially, especially. Um, so, okay. What would you say? To to the studs that are out there that may be interested, you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what would you? And I want, I want each of you to tell me individually. What would you um uh, say to the studs out there that may be interested, or are curious but don't really know how to like navigate or maneuver? Maybe um wanting to be a part of the fraternity, or just navigating life in general, what would you say to them? Ooh, that's a good one. Well, when it comes to joining any type of organization, I'll say this first. Um, you always want to do your research. You want to make sure that the values and the mission align to what you have going on, making sure that they align with your morals and your beliefs. That's the first step. Um, again, Everybody can't be a member of Sigma Omega Phi, and Sigma Omega Phi isn't meant for everyone, and that's okay. You can find a place, and there is a place for you. That's on the organization side. 
when it comes to life, the best advice I can give any masculine presenting woman, young or old, is to authentically be yourself. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you to be your authentic self. We have to remember that when we have these conversations, that it's not an LGBT issue. Let's be clear. It's not an LGBT issue. It is a human rights issue. Basic human rights. Right? Mm -hmm. Because when I married my wife, it wasn't a gay marriage. It was a marriage. Mm -hmm. Right? When we had our daughters and, and we have our grandchildren, they're, they're not LGBT grandkids. They're my grandkids. You know? Mm -hmm. So... I think that's where we need to start making that voice known is that it's a human rights issue. It's not an LGBT yeah. issue. It's a human rights issue. And unfortunately, we are getting scrutinized by things that people don't understand. And that's okay. I'm okay. It's okay to be worried. It's okay to be scared. Um, and again, I always watch my surroundings because the LGBT community is under attack right now. I don't care what anyone says, we are under attack. But live your true and authentic self. That's the only way you are able to live a successful and happy life. And it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be worrisome. But guess what? Sigma Omega Phi is here. We're going to be that voice. And we're going to let the legislation know that, hey, we are people. So I don't want people to worry. We got this. We're going to help y'all. We're going to take care of this. That's all I got to say. Go ahead. Ah. <laughs> oh, um, for me, I will say I'm a big, big, big believer of treat people how you want to be treated. It's just that simple. You know, um, you don't have to be, for me, I, I've learned that you don't have to be in the, in the, um, forefront to make a difference mm. it's okay you can send an email to somebody or bring up a topic or um, just to bring light to it and then somebody else may pick the, you know pick it up and it had that snowball effect and then boom you know you have something created or there's uh, awareness to that issue now so um, that was my thing. I'm like, oh, I'm not ready to pick up this big responsibility, but I could support you and, you know, get that uh, message across. So, um, if we just respect people and love people yeah. and treat people how you want to be treated, it's, it, things would be a lot different. Could be all so simple. Right. That part. <laughs> Um, for me to tell a young stud is to stay true to yourself, mm -hmm. um, but more importantly, don't get sidetracked by other people's opinions of you, even within the community. We are our toughest critic. Mm -hmm. There's so many rules and regulations, mm -hmm. so you have to be to thine own self, be true. Um, mm -hmm. I'm all about pick your, your area of education and your career path. Um, uh, put that before anything. Um, sometimes we'll get wrapped up into the party life and all that, and there's time and place for that, but time goes quick. Concentrate on your future. Um, nothing sexier than a successful <laughs> lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. That's the most important <laughs> But just, just, just have within yourself and with even within our own community you, you just be confident in, in yourself is really very important because yeah it's tough it's tough out of you yeah. <laughs> um so i think my, my statement to those who are interested in um the greek lifestyle um it's not for the weak it's not meant for everybody mm -hmm. um and you got to do your research you have to mm -hmm. because if you yeah. don't this is not a this is not a game. This is a, a lifetime commitment. You are saying, I, will, I, I, I wanna make a lifetime commitment to people I don't know, to a 
to a concept I don't know anything about. But I know that I need this and I want this. And you got to make sure you're making the right decision. There are a lot of fraternities out there that are catering to masculine presenting. Make sure it's the right one that fits you. Make sure you look good with them and they look good with you. And that doesn't just mean physically. That means that we know it, our insides are very similar. I bring something to the table, you bring something yeah. to the table. Yeah. Because when you join, well, I can speak for this org, when you join this org, your ideas, your concept, your character become a part of this organization. That's the only way it's going to grow. Just because, I mean, I'm a founder, but I'm not going to always be here. So I, brought, I put the foundation down. They just got to make sure they continue to build. And if, if that and that's the biggest thing for us is we're here to uplift. Yeah. You know, and some people don't make it in our and in, in, you know, to be a member of our organization. Does that mean we no longer talk to them? No. Does that mean we no longer care what they're doing? No, we still support you. We still your cheerleaders. We just have to cheer for you in a different in a different way because you're not a member of our org. Um, for those that are just life in general, hey, it, it's, it's rough out here. But when you can find your tribe, you can find your peace. And don't ever live in a home. Don't ever live in your, don't ever walk into your, your house and it is not a peaceful home. Mm -hmm. Your mental, and, and, and it is nothing wrong with a stud, you know, laying on the couch, having a conversation with a professional. Mental health, we need to be able to be okay oh, with that. Yeah. Put that pride yeah. aside and realize you need help. You need somebody to talk to, have that conversation. Um, orgs that do not cater to their, do not do community service inside, cannot, cannot provide community service to anyone outside in the community. Because that means you got sick members, you cannot, how you gonna heal the sick that is out here if we're all sick? Yeah. So we have mm -hmm. to, we, we here at Sigma Make Five, we are very much working on that to make sure that we have whole members. We can't. We not here to, you know, cure all the traumas and stuff. Yeah. We can sure point you to somebody who can help, and that makes you a better person, a better member, a better uh, mom, you know, auntie, grandma, whatever you are in your family, as well as a good, com you know, person in the community. So I, I, I leave you with that. Just make sure that you. And, and this is your community. We're all role models. That's the key. Even if you're not a member of this org, when you walk out your house as a masculine presenting, you're a role model whether you like it or not. Just remember somebody's Absolutely. watching you and yep. somebody takes yep. what you Absolutely. do and they're going to repeat it. So make sure you do mm -hmm. the right thing and they'll get light. Absolutely. I think that's solid advice. I mean, for sure, you can't, you can't pour from an empty cup. But it's just, that's what it is. You can't do that. And, um, I think not just not just with LGBTQ, but as as humans, we all do need to recognize that it's okay. We sometimes we just need support. We need some help. We need someone to talk to, and that's okay. It's absolutely fine. So mental health matters. It's definitely very important. So as everybody does, yes. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Everybody's, you know, everybody's not, you know, always wanting to, you know, speak. So. It's okay. okay, that's fair. I respect that. I honor that for sure. Um, is there anything that you want to leave with us? Um, we will be in Jacksonville in the fall. So Jacksonville, we can't wait to, you know, hang out with you guys and learn about Jacksonville. Um, we are about to start our fall um, intake. So those that are interested, please hit our website up. Um, and we're, we'll, you know, we'll be doing some things um, virtual for um, June for Pride Month um, with some other organizations. So definitely look for that. And the LGBT Greek Weekend is Labor Day weekend. We are hosts of that as well. We want to see everybody there. If you are not in a fraternity or sorority and you're interested, this is the place to be at. Is it in Atlanta Labor Day weekend from August the 31st to September the 3rd? Um, that is a great way to see all all of the um, organizations that are out there. Okay, awesome. And I'm gonna have you just shoot us an email with that information too, so that Absolutely. when I wrap this and write the article, I can include it in there. Um, Absolutely. Uh, and all the social media contact information so that we can include it in the article so that on our website, if anyone wants to be able to go find it through us, they're able to do that as well. Okay. Well, yeah, I think I think that's 
everything on my end. Let me run through my questions one more time. Oh, I this was just out, out of personal, like my own curiosity. Why the calla lily? Why why that particular flower? Um, founder. Yeah. yeah, it was it was it was a um, at the time there were five, there were six founders total in um, in our organization, um, and one of the founders' mothers. Um, that was one of her favorite flowers, and so we felt like there were elements within our organization that stand for things that are important to us. So that particular founder felt that the need that. Um, we use the calla lily for the fact that it is a rare, it is rare, you know, yeah. um, it is not your most common flower, um, but it is a loyal flower. And it, it, it's one of those ones that is always, it's always going to come up every year it comes up. Um, it might look like it's dying, but it's still there. So we really, we took that in and that's why we embraced it. That was, that was my own, like, I was just personally curious about that. I like flowers. So I was like, mm, let me. Let me throw that in there <laughs> real quick. <laughs> that is all my personal notes. Um, but let me see. Da, 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 da. I think I hit all the questions that I had. And even some of the things, some of the notes that I had, you spoke on, which is great. Um, yeah. Do you all have any questions for me? Or are we good? Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Jamaica. <laughs> oh, so I'll be back here. Like, yeah, I thought less so. Yeah, um, so. Because you said you weren't from here, you made the statement in the beginning.